Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to go back to the drawing board and take a look at another big Age of Empires topic that really gets talked about in depth. Um, this topic is the hill bonuses. Yes, hill bonus, what it is, um, what unit affects, etc, etc. I get tons of questions on this. A lot of people know some things about it, don't know some things about it. They might have heard something that's actually incorrect. So I'm here to kind of clarify all these things, answer some questions, and you know, give a general overview about what hill bonuses are, uh, and how they play into the game. So before I get into the video, I just want to say a little or give you guys a little update on this YouTube schedule for the next few days. So tomorrow I'm actually going to be doing the So You Want to Play Chinese. Um, it's part of my So You Want to Play series and Chinese was voted by you guys in the comments. So I'm going to be doing that tomorrow on, on stream, so on Twitch, link below for my uh, channel link. Uh, and that's going to be around noon Eastern and then at night Eastern, like midnight Eastern, I'm going to be uploading that same video to YouTube. So that's just going to come tomorrow uh, on the channel. Um, I guess on both platforms and then finally uh, in a couple days I'll probably be uploading another tier list videos and um, another tier list video rather and I'm debating between two topics but uh, more of that uh, well I guess I'll, I'll think about it and uh, you guys will see shortly what video I chose for that one so uh, anyway that's just what's coming up for the YouTube schedule uh, we're almost done the 30 days of YouTube so I thought I'd give you guys a little uh, clarity there anyway enough talk let's hop into it so uh, for this video I have three you know three things I want to talk about First step is to talk about what hill bonuses actually are, uh, and then you know how they affect range units, melee units, and finally to talk about mangonel versus mangonel and how that hill bonus plays into it. Uh, I gave myself four tries for each team. Uh, second thing I want to talk about is going to be the buildings, so towers and hill bonuses and how that affects it. Ooh, thanks for the follow. I'm not streaming. That's an extra one. YouTube. Trust me, I'm not cheating here. <laughs> and then uh, the third thing I want to talk about is just show you guys, uh, you know, in a large fight, 25 crossbows versus 25 crossbows. Uh, kind of like an in-game scenario, just how much of an effect the hill bonus actually has, okay? So just to give you guys an in-game perspective of what it would look like. So uh, let's hop into it here and let's first start with what is the hill bonus. So the best way to explain hill bonus is to first tell you guys what it does. The hill bonus states that um, if you're on top of a hill, therefore attacking downwards or attacking downhill, you will deal an extra 25% damage and you will be taking... 25% less damage, all right? So that's basically a difference of 50%, again, 25% that you're dealing more, and then 25% that you're taking less. Now, you might be wondering, uh, do I have to be at the top of the hill, like really far above my opponent uh, to get this bonus? Well, it's actually not that, uh, you know, not that complicated. It's very simple. The rule is that if you're at any point higher than your opponent in combat, you will get this hill bonus applied to you. Therefore, if just this one tile, if you're on the top of this small hill and your opponent is here, you will get the downhill attack bonus, attack hill, the downhill hill bonus uh, in, that, in that fight. So it really is just being higher than your opponent. Even on another example here, if this knight is sitting right here and then you have another knight approach it and start hitting it, well, this knight will be higher up than its opponent who's coming up the hill. Therefore, this knight will have the hill bonus. So let's put it into practice here. Let's start with a range unit. So I'm going to go ahead and control the blue eyes now. Okay, so again, I have no upgrades. So I have a crossbow with 5 attack versus a knight with 2 pierce armor. Therefore, my shot with no hill bonus, again, I'm on flat ground, will do 3 damage. Let's test the theory. All right, well, looking pretty good. 3 damage increments. Seems good to me, right? This, this works. Okay, so let's go ahead and bypass this knight here. And let's take a look at, well, this knight. So let's see if I can, I think I got to move him closer, actually. Put him here. Put him like that. Okay, let's go back here and let's see what we're dealing. Three damage, two damage. Oh boy, two damage again, two damage again, three damage. So what exactly is happening here? I'm attacking downhill. So I'm doing three damage base, which we talked about here. But now since he's taking 25% less damage, some of the shots are dealing two damage. Now, Age of Empires doesn't show decimal points, but they, that doesn't mean they don't actually count them. Basically, the decimal point is stored into the unit so that every time I hit a certain amount of shots, it actually registers as, uh, the, you know, full damage of three, and then it goes back and resets. So basically, the first shot will deal three, the next three shots will deal two damage each, and then let's say the fourth shot after that will deal another three damage, all right? So it is calculating the decimal point, it's just not showing it to you. So in this case, the knight is taking 25% less damage. And that's why some shots are dealing two, and then some shots are dealing three. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and see uh, what happens if maybe we're on um, no, we're on a hill, 
and our, our knight is just on a higher hill and let's see what happens here so we're technically on a hill right here but this knight is just higher up than us so what happens well three damage oh two damage that means that we're dueling uh we're dealing less damage that means we're, that he actually has the hill bonus on us now even if he's not attacking us he's still benefiting from the 25 percent damage reduction all right and that's exactly what i'm showing you guys here all right and then finally if he's at the top of the hill this guy if he gets attacked by any unit around along any area on this hill this guy will be taking or will have the hill advantage all right so he will always be taking less damage however this guy if let's say i climb the hill well now i'm dealing 25 percent more damage so we're gonna see three up uh, four 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 three you guys see that so it's storing the decimal both ways both at attacking from a uh, lower position and attacking from a higher position in both instances decimal points are being stored and um and the damage reduction or uh, damage boost is being calculated. Now, this is not only for ranged units. This happens as well for melee units. Now, if we consider a knight versus a knight, we have 10 base attack, the knight has two armor. So we should be dealing eight damage to a unit that's not on a hill. Let's test it out. All right, well, it checks out, eight damage. And you know what, he's doing the same to us. Oh, he's not attacking us actually, that's fine. Uh, we can actually change that here real quick. We'll put him on stand ground, so that should fix it. He'll probably attack us and deal 8 damage to us as well. So he'll probably hit us once or twice here. Once, and he does 8 damage. Okay, so let's go ahead and take on this knight here, who's got 29 uh, you know, hit points. Let me put him on stand ground here. Okay, and he will probably fight us back now. And so what we're expecting to do, uh, or what we're expecting to have happen here, is that our knight will deal 8 damage base, however minus 25%, because this guy is on the higher hill, so that would be 6 damage. And then this guy on top is going to be dealing... Uh, 8 damage base plus 25%. So I think that should be 10 damage. There might be some decimal points in there in both cases, all right? So I'm not exactly sure of the decimal, but let's take a look. All right, 6 damage. Math checks out. Math checks out. And then he's dealing 10 damage to us. So the math is right there, right? So even in melee and in range fights, we are both... Uh, or, or There's damage boost happening if you're up the hill, and then there's damage decrease... Uh, you know, uh, damage reduction if you're attacking from uphill or from the bottom of a hill. All right, and then finally, I wanted to show that if uh, you climb to the top of a hill and now I'm on flat ground, but I'm on a massive hill, it doesn't matter. It still treats it like it's flat ground. So if we just fight here, what happens? Well, eight damage being done here, and then bam, right here, eight damage being done as well. All right, so uh, it's pretty clear that, you know, regardless where you are on the hill, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is, are you higher up than the other unit? And if the answer is yes, then hill bonus applies. If you're on the exact same level, even if it's in the middle of a hill right here, no, no hill bonus will apply, all right? So again, don't, don't overcomplicate it. That's basically all you need to know about hill bonuses. Let's go into the complicated stuff now, all right? So that was the beginner aspect of it. Let's bring out the mangonels. Let's bring out the big boys, all right? So one mangonel from both sides will be coming out. And the first thing we wanna talk about is um what happens to a mangonel if they fight on level ground actually that's the first thing we should talk about here okay so we're gonna bring in the mangonel bear with me as i move them this is the best way i saw to do it um and uh, we're just gonna take a look and see what exactly happens if a mangonel shoots at another mangonel on flat ground all right so bringing in this one i'm gonna shoot it's gonna shoot it back at me it should have shot back at me okay that's the thing oh that's why i gave myself extra tries bear with me youtube so I'm just going to click both of them and let's see what happens. So they're going to trade one on one. Ah, interesting. Both die. All right. So both died and we traded a shot. Okay. Interesting. But again, this is with base damage. Um, let's see what happens if we include hill bonuses to this. So let's put this mangonel at the top of the hill and let's approach it with a mangonel of our own. And let's see exactly what, what goes down. Let's pretend I have no idea either. And I'm just going to discover uh, what happens with you guys. All right, so our magnet will approach and I will just click it. And then I will go here, crazy micro here, and I'll click this. Let's see what happens. The shoot, same time. And what happened? Well, the red mangonel actually ended up surviving with 7 HP remaining. This is because it's taking 25% less damage from my mangonel, which is shooting uphill. And so this mangonel is also dealing 25% more damage. But as we saw earlier, you don't actually need bonus damage to kill the mangonel. It kills it regardless. So uh, the big thing at, that, at play here is that, well, we're not doing, uh, we're dealing 25% less damage from the bottom of the hill. Therefore, we can't actually kill it. 
In a Maginot fight in game, guys, this is a huge deal because it means that he saved 300 resources. This Maginot costs roughly 300 resources, which is huge. Actually, not roughly, exactly. No, no, roughly 300 resources, which is huge. We don't want that. We want to trade or do one better. So let's go ahead and see. Let's delete this one and bring out the last one and see what we can do to actually counteract this one. It's the same scenario will happen. I'm going to have one Maginot attacking his Maginot on the top of the hill. But this time, I'm going to delete my Maginot after it shoots its shot. And again, I'm going to pretend I don't know what, what's going to happen. And we're going to find out together. So, same situation. Uh, I'm going to just click this. I'm going to have to do some crazy micro here. Take that, click that, then go back here and shoot, delete. Whoa, what happened? Really? So... Uh, his Maginot actually died the exact same scenario. He's on higher ground, so the, it checks out he's got the hill bonus, yet he actually died. So let me try to explain what's going on here. Now for Maginot's, and I believe Maginot's only, maybe all Siege, um, when you shoot and then you delete your unit or you lose it from another cause, so if, if, if at the same time 40 or 60 uh, crossbows shot my Maginot and it died, same thing. If it dies after it shot, it's shot. The shot that's still floating in the air, the projectiles, forget which unit it came from. So it actually counts as no hill bonus applied whatsoever. Therefore, it completely nullifies the hill bonus and it makes it so it trades one for one, similar to how they traded one for one on even ground. All right, so that's what we call the Manganel delete trick. Call it the bug abuse, call it what you want. It's legal in tournaments, so therefore I believe it's legal and it's okay to know about and teach it others. And so that's a nice little trick to do in your games. Um, never lose a Maginot for free like that again. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about buildings now before we talk about uh, what happens in these realistic fights. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, I'm gonna take one from here and uh, just to keep things fair, I will actually delete a unit from the red team. So it's gonna be 24 versus 24 instead of 25 versus 25. So let's keep it all fair. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is tower on flat ground. See how much damage they do, and then talk about towers where one of them is on low ground and the other is on high ground. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and convert this guy tower. Okay. All right, what happens here? So this tower is dealing one damage each. Okay. Well, this is not that interesting at all, actually, because it's dealing one damage on... Uh, on no bonuses uh, or on flat hit you know, flat hills like gears in here what happens let's take a look here it's actually dealing six damage okay so let's let's do the test this way so we're dealing six damage on even ground when i'm garrison with one unit so this is important so six damage it deals one damage without any garrison okay so keep in mind six damage on level ground so anyway let's go ahead we can just delete that now we don't mind okay and let's go ahead and convert this. So it's one damage each so far. Let's go ahead and garrison. Takes damage again. So what is actually going on here? Well, as it turns out, towers actually are not affected by hill bonus when attacking other towers and uh, other buildings uh, in general, I believe. So in a tower war, if your opponent builds his on a hill and you have yours on a flat ground, don't think that you're gonna lose it because you have you know flat ground or because you don't have the hill bonus. Hill bonus actually doesn't apply for building, so you're still dealing the same amount of damage when um, when you're at the bottom of the hill or when you have the hill disadvantage. Okay, so that's for buildings alone; it doesn't affect it. And just to give you guys some, you know, uh, clarification here, the hill bonus does work for towers. Again, notice it has five damage, but with 25% extra damage, it's dealing six or seven. You're dealing six, then probably six, then probably seven. There it is. Okay, so it actually does have hill bonuses versus units. But versus other buildings, it doesn't have hill bonuses. And or, and same thing for the bottom of the hill. It doesn't have hill uh, disadvantages, okay? So the uh, general rule there is that building versus units, building has hill bonus. Building versus building, uh, no hill bonus applies, okay? Fairly simple. All right, so, so for the final test on this list, I'm just going to put this in perspective and show you guys a 24 versus 24 crossbow fight. One army being downhill and one army being at the top of the hill. I'm just going to patrol for both and we're going to see what happens. All right. So stand ground patrol from both. One of them sideways, one of them straight forward. And they have the same upgrades completely. Oh, I should probably patrol these guys though properly. Okay. Well, they had a missed patrol and I promise you they'll still win. That's how strong hill bonus is. So if anything, it just further uh, amplifies it. If they weren't fighting completely uh, from the start. 
And, well, they still dominate the fights in big fashion. Okay. So even with that little miss micro for me at the start, we still end up the video, or sorry, I still end up the fights with 12 crossbows remaining with equal variables. In fact, the red team even taking a weaker fight, we still managed to win the fight with 12 crossbows remaining. So when you were looking before, you were wondering, Hera, it's just one unit. It's fine if he gets an extra 25% damage. Well, when you apply that to a big army, it actually snowballs the effect. So then when he has like, you know, 15 crossbows remaining and I have five crossbows remaining, he's killing my units much faster. So the effect of that just 25% damage increase and 25% damage reduction amplifies throughout the fight and actually snowballs into a huge win. So in this case, 12 crossbows remaining. In another case, maybe 10 knights will remain. And in another case, it'll be like 20 paladin and the game is over, you lose. So, you know, just to give you guys some, you know, some, I guess, um, context here that, you know, in game hills do matter. And uh, as much, as much as you can try to take fights from the top of hills and uh, try to avoid fights if you're, you know, approaching it from the bottom of the hill. So I hope this video was useful. I'm actually using two monitors here. It's my first time. Um, so I, if, you had, if I was looking here at, at all throughout the video, that's probably why. But I hope this video was useful and I hope that I explained hill bonuses uh, as best as I can. If I missed something or if I didn't explain something, uh, you know, correctly, uh, if I was wrong in any aspect of the video, let me know in the comments below. I'll happily correct myself or explain more. Uh, I hope you guys do continue to enjoy these kind of videos and stay tuned for more content this this month. Like I said, tomorrow with the So You Want to Play Chinese. Um, take care, guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.